Hey cats, it's Ed Midsoul Bud here. When a brand needs to create a follow-up for one of their most successful products over the last few years, that process is always fraught with danger. People love the item. They don't want it to change too much, but they still want a refresh, a sparkly new version that they can purchase that does all that the original did, but more. I guess it's the same with albums, the same with films, air fryers perhaps, but it's especially true with running shoes. We all have our favourite models out there, yet when the new version drops, sometimes it's met with a bit of disappointment. Practically the same, or they change them too much, it becomes something totally different. I thought it might be fun to have a look at the changes we might see in the Vaporfly and Next% 3 when it finally launches to the public in a few months' time. Let's just hope we don't have a Home Alone 3 situation here. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in people, it's always appreciated. If you haven't done so yet, help the channel to continue to grow by hitting that subscribe button and clicking the bell below for notifications. It also helps if you pick up some merch as well. I'm modeling the midsole now hoodie. Very warm, very comfortable. It must look something like me as well because my son pointed and went, Daddy. You can also help us out by hitting that like button and also sharing the video with your running buddies. So today, talking about the model that's been very, very popular over the last few years, the Vaporfly Next Percent. There's a third version coming very, very soon. What I'd like to do today is look at some key differences between the Next Percent 2 and the Next Percent 3. I've highlighted four areas that I want to look at, and I'm going to discuss whether they're merely visual differences or perhaps performance oriented changes. The reason I came up with this video is that I saw the Takumi Sen 9 has dropped on the Adidas app. I went to go and pick up a pair and then realized that it's practically the same shoe. I mean, they put a nine on it. Apparently it's four grams lighter in the sample size. But when you look at them, they look very, very close between the eight and the nine. So I'm not prepared to smash out 170 earth credits on a shoe that's basically the same as the one I've already got. I think that's kind of taking it to the extreme there, Adidas. You know, you want to make a new version of it, but basically the same shoe. But the Vaporfly X% 3 does look quite different. First thing I want to look at today is that very pointed section in the heel of the Next% Percent and the Next% Percent 2. It really does jut out quite prominently in the shoe. I know a lot of people have caught this section of the shoe, perhaps on a stair or just something sticking out there. You know, when you're out there running, there's all sorts of hazards. It does also appear to be a point of separation Separation for the two parts of the foam that we have here in the midsole. Now, the same was true of the Invincible Run as well from Nike. That had a very bulbous rear section to the shoe, as you can see on screen right now. That air of the shoe just seemed completely unnecessary in reality. I got very little wear back there. I mean, if you deliberately strike the floor at that angle, maybe you might get some sort of use out of it. But who does that? I do recall some viewers at the time when they released it saying that it was something to do with being aerodynamic. I'd ask the question that if you just remove that piece of foam back there, it would make the shoe more aerodynamic by making it lighter. Just make it more nimble, surely. And it seems like that's exactly what Nike have done in the new version of the shoe. They've chopped off that end section somewhat. Was it really needed after all? Probably not. The new V3 version has a less severe protrusion here. So is it a visual change? Is it to do with performance? I think they've just got rid of it and realized they could probably save a little bit of weight. So I guess it is performance related this time. Now the most interesting change to the midsole material here is that lateral side cutout. You can see there that the foam has now exposed the plate that's sandwiched between the two sections of Zoom X in the shoe. Nothing like that here in the Next% Percent 2. The plate's completely encapsulated within the foam. Now, have they changed this to perhaps enhance stability? Looking on the medial side of the arch, it's still increased there and heightened to improve the medial stability as per the last two versions of the shoe. As you can see here in the Next% Percent 2, there's quite a significant sidewall there in the arch, but it's nowhere near as pronounced on the lateral side. With the plate partly visible, is that to show off the tech hidden away in the midsole? Or do Nike deem the foam on the lateral side there just unnecessary? Is it that Nike Air trick where they kind of expose the air unit so everybody can see it? They use that back in the Air Max to show off that encapsulated technology. In the recent Air Jordan 3 Fire Red rear shoes, they featured an included pamphlet telling you all about the air unit and the encapsulated one that's in the forefoot of the shoe, just in case you didn't know it was there. 
because it is there but you just can't see it if you can't see something then you can't sell it personally i feel this is another visual change i see little performance increase in terms of the lateral stability I mean, if anything, judging by the video on screen at the moment, I'd suggest that it's actually making the shoe a little bit less stable. So, a bit of a mixed bag so far. Let's have a look at the next difference. We're talking about the outsole next. Now, a lot of people found that very sharp debris like stones or pieces of glass would very easily get embedded in the foam rubber here in the forefoot of the next percent. I've experienced that exact same issue on every single pair that I've got. Although, to be honest, the rubber coverage is pretty good on the Vaporfly next percent, it has to be said. And I found durability to be pretty good, actually, for a shoe that many people suggest is quite fragile. The plate is almost right beneath the rubber here in the forefoot of the shoe. So any debris that gets through there is going to meet with that plate head on. It gets kind of embedded in there as well. You've got to kind of lift it out with some sort of sharp object. The outsole setup here is very close to what we see on the Pegasus Turbo Next Nature that was released in 2022. You've got a stretch web of lugs there in the mid to forefoot area and they get slightly smaller towards the edges of the outsole sole section. The rubber's clearly weight relieved here. Nike are trying to save a few more grams, though of course we haven't got that full four foot rubber coverage this time. I never thought the outsole on the next percent was the best really. It was adequate i suppose it's not a patch on the stuff you get in the adidas shoes or asics for that matter so obviously without that full rubber coverage there's going to be more access to the foam there from any debris that you might step on so less durability but with the benefit of less weight to the shoe interestingly in the rear of the shoe the rubber does now appear to stretch back that bit further in the next percent three compared to previous releases that's going to bring a smile to the face of many that is one area especially on the medial side of the heel where you do tend to get a lot of aesthetic wear it does feel here in the vaporfly next percent three that we've got less exposed foam certainly in the midfoot and the heel perhaps due to the way that that zoom x has been contoured whereas here it was pretty much just exposed for the elements to get at i mean this foam is just going to compress as it hits the floor anyway so maybe nike are trying to come up with some sort of springboard type situation there of course you may feel differently on this these are just my observations okay our differences in thought are what makes the world go round lastly Let's talk about the upper. Not everybody was a big fan of the mesh material here in the Vaporfly Next Percent 2. What we have on the Next Percent 3 is more like a fishing net, totally different to Vaporweave and the mesh on the V1 and V2. So why the change if it's worked so well up to this point? If the uppers were so good before, does this make the shoe any lighter? Does it need to be any more breathable? And why hasn't that flyprint upper material not been featured here in the Next Percent 3? I gotta be honest, I found that both the uppers on the V1 and the V2 worked very, very well. Vaporweave was containing without soaking up any water, though it was a bit odd and it took time to get used to due to its plasticky nature. The mesh on the V2 was more natural in feel and it gave the shoe a slightly more roomy feel and the toe box especially. Now this new upper material certainly seems like it's coming straight from the drawing board and the design studio where they created the Endorphin Pro 3. Incidentally, I think that shoe's probably the closest thing that we have to a competitor to the Vaporfly Next Percent 2. Certainly in terms of performance, those two shoes are pretty up there, really. There's not a huge amount of difference. It's down to the runner, then. The upper materials do look very similar. I think you will agree. Personally, I think Nike are once again trying to lower the weight of the shoe just a little bit by a few grams. I think they're trying to regain that sort of GOAT status for this shoe. Let's not forget the surge in Adidas recently, certainly in terms of marathon and half marathon podiums there seem to be a lot more top level runners utilizing adidas shoes for those races i think the upper refresh this time around is actually a performance change reducing the materials down as much as possible trying to shave off a few grams perhaps making the shoes super breathable i mean how many people are running you know road marathons in the pouring rain and wind well, outside of the UK. Most of them take place when the weather's that little bit better, so I think that's what they're doing here. 
I think this is one thing that Nike already had over Adidas to some extent. The Nike shoes certainly still have a weight advantage over the Adidas models, although everybody else is kind of catching them up a little bit, especially Asics and Saucony. So is it a visual update to the shoe or a performance one? I think pretty much a performance update. That's what I'm expecting here. Most of the changes that they seem to have made here I think it's a shave off a bit of weight. Again, I'm not picking up that Takumi Sen 9. I just don't need the same shoe again with a very marginal weight difference. It's just not worth it. You know, is spending £170 worth it for four grams difference per shoe? No, it's not. Maybe I'll pick it up down the line once they've discounted them. So what do you make of my ideas, people? Is it change for change's sake or small potential improvements in the shoe that may pay off? Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments. Musical interlude time. I've been dipping back into my extensive CD archive. I pulled out The Eraser by Tom York. I can't believe this one was made in 2006. Seems like yesterday or something. Really love the title track. There's some really interesting production on that one. I really love the use of that continued and repetitive sampled piano chord there's lots of noise around it everything sounds very organic actually on this record i don't know how they've done that using all these samples and synthesizers and drum machines everything just sounds very real and different every single beat sounds different i really love the cool use of this human generated percussion as well the track the clock really does sound like that actually it's like you're watching the clock the pressure's building some really cool little noises in there that are clearly tom just making sounds into a microphone. I love the spooky feel of the track and it rained all night. The vocals just sort of teetering on being out of tune at times, but it's deliberate. It does put you on edge. I really like that. A really great listen, this one, if you've never heard it before. It worked really well on my long run today. 14.25 miles. Listening to the Eraser, it was fantastic. I was completely in another world, which was good because there were Loads of people out there that were wandering around with absolutely no regard for anybody at all. They just kind of people walking straight towards me on their phones. So if you are watching this on a phone, do make sure that you're being very responsible about it. Go and check it out, guys. The Eraser by Tom York. Thanks for tuning in, people. It is always appreciated. Hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications. Also, give this video a thumbs up, like, and share it with your running buddies. Hit us up with a super thanks as well if you're particularly enjoying the content on the channel. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.